Hi there, I'm Danny Gregory. I am one of the co-founders of Sketchbook School, along with Kosha, who you already know. And I am, not only am I a, a co-founder of Sketchbook School, not only do I teach at Sketchbook School, but I'm also a student at Sketchbook School. And, and Kosha and I, honestly, the dirty secret is that we created this whole thing so that we could take classes. And one of the fun parts for us is that we get to do homework each week of each class. So um, you saw Kosha last week, now it's my turn. And I'm really excited because I get to, to do um, the homework for Mike Lowry's class. And I think that Mike is just, he's just so um, talented but also funny and um, a great teacher. And I've just learned a lot from him and from spending time with him. I went down to Atlanta with the crew and we, we filmed Mike there in his house and met his family and hung out with them. It was really, really nice. So there are a few things that I've taken away from this week that I'd like to incorporate into the way that I do my homework assignment. So one of them is I love the line quality that Mike brings. You know, he just has a certain confidence in the way that he draws. It's very like direct. He uses big, fat, squishy lines, which I really love too. And also Mike, um, you know, his work seems simple. I mean, I think he's such a great children's book illustrator because his stuff is almost like a kid's drawing. But of course, if you've tried to draw like Mike does, you know that it's it takes work, it takes, uh, it takes practice, it takes experience, and you know, well, that's what we're here for. So uh, I wanna try and draw like Mike. I wanna just draw this kind of simple hard lines, no shading, no, you know, it's direct. Secondly, um, I want to use the iPad because I like drawing on the iPad anyway, but I also really like watching Mike and seeing how he does it and following his example. So I'm gonna be working um, with Procreate with an Apple Pencil on my, um, on my iPad Pro. And if you don't have an iPad Pro, you can also buy the newest generation of iPads that also you can use the pencil with. Um, it's a fantastic tool. I've really enjoyed working with it. So I'm gonna be working with the iPad. And then another thing that I like about Mike's work is the fact that he, um, he also uses a really limited palette, right? I hope you notice that. Uh, and he talks a bit about it, how he, he um, you know, restrains the number of colors that he uses. And I think that's a fantastic technique, particularly when you're starting out. Um, when I began drawing, I only used a black pen. Literally for several years, I think, I used a black pen on white paper monochromatic. And then one day, it's a special treat, I allowed myself a single warm gray marker, I think it was a number two marker, brush marker. And then, because I was a good boy, I got to have another one, and I got to get a, a second um, added to my, to my collection, and a second gray pen, and then over time, I, um, I added more. And I soon had all of the warm gray pens and all of the cool gray pens. And then one really fantastic day, I added another, my first color, I think it was green. And then over time, I expanded my palette. So I felt like I really understood each color. I understood its relationship with others. I understand how to lay them, layer them. It was a great way to train myself. So rather than plunging into the art supply store and grabbing armfuls of colored pencils and big stacks of watercolor sets, I proceeded baby step by baby step. And I think it gave me a lot more confidence and allowed me to experiment. And also, to, frankly, when you have a limited palette, it pulls your work together. It pulls your page together. It forms connections between things. Um, whereas if you have a kaleidoscope of colors, it can be much more difficult to manage and to make you know, a kind of coherent statement with your work. So that's why I'm still a big advocate of that idea. Ah, that's good. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna use a limited palette. It's gonna be a little less limited than Mike's. Um, I want to do a bit more color, but I'm going to be drawing on the iPad and uh, I'm going to be using, just in case you were wondering, my theme for my icons is going to be beverages, all kinds of beverages. And uh, why not? We all like beverages. Who doesn't? Who? It's my favorite drink is the beverage. Hopefully yours too. So, all right, here we go. I'm going to crank out the iPad.
and uh, I'm going to start by just drawing my very first line drawing. And my first drawing is going to be of uh, just a mug. And then I'm going to work my way across, draw a wine glass, draw a bottle, draw another kind of bottle, draw, uh, I don't know, maybe, is this a Manhattan or a Rob Roy? Another kind of cocktail with a cherry, a nice glass of water, a can of Coke, a bowl of soup, it's a beverage, why not? And some fruit punch. And then a uh, nice tough, frosty beer. Hey, my dog's bowl. Well, his name isn't Fido, but um, a cup of tea. One of those kind of exotic drinks in an old, in a half shell of a coconut. An ice cream soda, a Coca-Cola, maybe a bottle of uh, Heineken, a bottle of vodka, sports drink, a Bloody Mary. Uh, let's make this into some kind of refreshing summer drink. Maybe a Mexican beer with a slice of lime. And then a mason jar, you know, with some kind of nutty drink in it. And then finally another kind of vodka or beer or something. Okay, so now I'm going to work with this really limited palette, uh, six or seven colors, and I'm just going to start working my way across my whole page, um, coloring each one and uh, just using this small range, trying to keep, limit it to two or three colors at most per beverage until I've filled up the entire page. And I think that this set of colors really, it pulls the whole thing together, as I said. Um, it unifies them. I've taken some liberties with the kind of colors, but it's, I love the connections that you form between a glass of wine and a Coca-Cola and then, you know, down to a cherry somewhere else. Those things are all nice and connected. So there you have it. Um, a page of icons. And, you know, you can take a little thing like this and you could turn it into um, a t-shirt. You could turn it into um, an invitation to a cocktail party. Hey, come over, have a drink. Um, you could make it into um, a poster for your friend's bar. Um, or you could just use it for fun. Or maybe um, if you took, uh, let's make a map, our other fantastic class, you could, you know, make a map of all the bars in your neighborhood and put a different cocktail for each one. So lots of things you can do with icons, but I think they're just a great fun exercise. Um, I love drawing things that have a single theme and I love this limited palette treatment as well. I hope you've had fun working, doing your homework for uh, the Whimsical Sketchbook and that you uh, are going to share it on the classroom because I can't wait to see it and uh, I'll see you next week on uh, the next thrilling uh, set of uh, lessons in this course. Have fun and uh, bottoms up!